All right, so if we can go to the next slide, Tanya. Some of you may have seen this before. We showed this in our coping with COVID and we just liked it so much we wanted to show it to you again. It has been quite a year, 2020, and we're not through it yet. OK, Tanya, next slide. So here's what we're going to cover today. In thinking about this presentation, we really thought it would be helpful to cover some new material. Some of you joined us before when we talked about coping with COVID. We wanted to spend more time today talking about stress because as we've moved out of seeing this as a crisis and more into a way of living and working, we understand that we need to know how we're going to move forward in living with COVID rather than seeing it as a crisis that uh, we're trying to work through because quite frankly we don't know how long this is going to go on. So we're going to talk today about personal stress, work stress, um, we're going to talk about strategies for survival and these are four of the top ones that we would say in the world of psychology and social work are known to be helpful for, for people when they're trying to manage stress. And then at the end we'll just touch on some resources that we think might be helpful. We also have a little cameo uh, coming to you from Steve Burroughs, who is our staff wellness person. So you'll hear from him also. OK, next slide, Tanya. Twenty twenty is a mess. I think that goes without saying. These are just some of the impacts of COVID and it's not meant to be an exhaustive list and it's it's really just meant to sort of you know confirm for all of us that with COVID there have been impacts in all of our life domains and you know not just the personal and the, the professional but in terms of our families in terms of finances all kinds of things have been affected from COVID. And so we're not going to detail a lot of that today because we know that that's a reality for people. And we also know that people have been differentially impacted. So we're not going to belabor the impacts. We just want to honor them with this slide here. All right, Tanya, next slide. We know from looking at the impact of COVID that people are continuing to be in that fight, flight or freeze response and also experiencing high levels of anxiety and feelings of depression. And what we want to say to you about this is that we want you to start to reframe some of your responses as perhaps um, normal responses in, in a time that's very challenging and abnormal for all of us. So it's not unusual when people are under a lot of stress to feel overwhelmed, to feel confused, to feel scattered. And it's also not unusual to feel that your normal ways of coping maybe aren't as effective as they were before, or that things that maybe you were able to uh, have more resilience around are more difficult now. And that's all just part of the game of dealing with what we're dealing with. And you've also seen as you're watching the news and, and looking what's happening in our country as well as south of the border, that the impact of COVID is, is having an impact on how people are coping in general, but also globally how we're seeing things such as racism and uh, violence increasing in our communities. So we know that uh, the impacts are far reaching and that can be also very overwhelming for people because there's only so much that we can manage and only so much that we can change. Moving to the next slide. I love this, by the way, we took this from Steve. Uh, business in the front, small gathering of up to six people from no more than two households in the back. And the next slide, I think we're turning it over to Julie uh, to talk a little bit about entitlement. I think you were going to talk about entitlement. <laughs> well, then I will do that, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> so, Enjoy. <laughs> thank you. So some of you have heard this concept before, and, and this comes out of a lot of the work that Kevin Cameron has done, our understanding the impact of crisis and trauma. And um, oh, we've got somebody who can't hear us, and I'm not sure. Is anybody else having that issue? 
I just see one person saying that. I'm sorry that. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's only you. Uh, oh, people are saying they can hear us. All right. Thank you. Loud and clear. Excellent. So concept of entitlement, just going back to that, Kevin Cameron talks about this in his training. Some of you may have heard of Kevin Cameron or done the training. And the concept really just helps remind us that people are as entitled to to be as impacted as they are, that we really aren't in a place to judge other people's lived experiences or how they experience things even if we've had the same experiences. So part of what we want to recognize is that it's really important to continue to be compassionate and understanding um, of other people as well as ourselves. And, and that can be tough because in a day-to-day -day life, you may sometimes feel that others aren't coping as well as they could be or should be. Um, and you may find that that judgment is creeping in. And again, these are normal reactions in a difficult time. So we just want to be mindful of the fact that how we cope affects others, how they cope affects us. And at the end of the day, we just want to try to be compassionate with one another and be kind because that's what's going to make the most difference. Over to you, Julie. <laughs> I'll take the ball this time. <laughs> Tanya. Uh oh, there we go. So looking at the somatic symptoms, the things that happen to us when we're under stress, it was funny when we saw this, we thought this was just a checklist of what everyone in safe schools was feeling. So things like headaches and tension in your neck and tummy upset, difficulty sleeping. We asked her to add the overeating because the um, Lack of appetite wasn't a problem for many in our team. Tanya? So this is what we call the cycle of stress. So it's the idea that a stressor comes into our lives and then we have thoughts about that, that influences our emotions and sometimes leads to maladaptive behaviors. This is really what you've probably heard CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. And that's really sort of the basis for this idea that everything affects everything else. So for instance, you feel a stress, you're concerned about maybe something like job security, I might lose my job. Those automatic thoughts kick in. I always say it's almost like a dryer, right? They're going round and round and round. I'm gonna lose my job, you know, um, I'm not gonna be able to feed my family, I'm gonna, I can't pay my mortgage, and around and around that goes. You can see that if you're thinking that way, how you're gonna feel that way as well. It's going to bring some really negative emotions on and then it can lead to maladaptive behaviors. So when we say that we mean often it's sort of things around addiction. So the use of maybe drugs or alcohol to try and um, make yourself feel better, to try and shut down those thoughts, those sorts of things. And Tanya is going to talk a bit later about some ideas of how to intervene with those thoughts and if you're changing how you're thinking and you're talking to yourself then you're also going to be changing how you feel about things. So we talk about a couple of different kinds of stress. One is acute stress um, which is our immediate response to a stressor in our lives. So originally this might be things like saber-toothed tigers coming at us, other things uh, in the past and we have developed that fight or flight uh, mechanism to deal with that. In our current day, it might be, for instance, a kid that is really escalating or is coming at us as angry, that sort of thing. We're going to have a natural uh, stress reaction to that, which is that fight or flight. The cortisol is flooding into our body. We're getting ready to do something. The problem with it is, even though it's adaptive in some situations, like the saber-toothed tiger thing, um, in terms of when we actually have to be um, more sort of cognitive in how we're dealing with things, we've got a student there we're trying to deal with, it can make us more reactive and it can make us more impatient. So it, it turns out that our body and our reactions start to sort of work against us a little bit, make things a bit harder for us. We also then we talk about chronic stress. So that's sort of the buildup of a whole bunch of stressors that are sort of there on a long-term basis. So it isn't something that's happening right away. 
it's it's something that we're living with or that's in our life for longer periods of time. And those things tend to add up one on top of the other. Um, so for instance, COVID is just this underlying thing in our lives. Um, all those changes to uh, teaching, changes you know, for custodians around what they're having to do, all these things are coming in in terms of these chronic stressors. We also have them in our personal life acting there in, in the background as well. So chronic stress um, is pretty, it floods our body with a lot of fat cortisol, but on a regular basis, instead of it being there for a good reason, it just kind of is floating around there. It gets in the way of our ability to be resilient and to cope with the things that we need to cope with. So um, work-related stressors, we were talking about this and just how difficult this is right now. So we have the normal pressures in your line of work. Um, and then now your work for most of us is very different, right? You've got teachers who instead of teaching, you know, a class every day, all of a sudden you're pushing those together and having to teach all day every day on something. So we also have pressures between groups, uh, union, management, government in our community, and also that responding to the different ever-changing rules and guidelines and messaging. I know that our team often comes in and it's like trying to figure out, okay, what are the rules from the government right now? What are the rules in this situation? What do I need to do um, to keep safe, to keep our schools safe, keep our kids safe? And we've all been scrambling around trying to deal with that. So um, we had some sort of last minute things from the government in terms of how things were going to go. And I think we've all been scrambling since that time trying to figure it all out. Seems to have settled a bit now, um, but it is still an ongoing stressor for sure. Um, and then responding to our colleagues, everybody is at a different point in how they're dealing with this. People have different levels of concern uh, about it and are doing different things in their lives. And you're dealing with that all the time. And you're also always working through your own stress too, while you're trying to deal with everyone else's as well. So just the idea that, you know, COVID isn't all of it. <laughs> Work isn't even all of it, uh, especially having come off of this shutdown. Uh, many of us have many other stresses that are going on. Um, you may be having challenges around your physical health, um, issues around uh, parents and their health, dealing with kids, um, the changes in the family scheduling, having some kids that are learning at home and what does that look like and um, things like just the normal stuff that's going on in your house. I know in my house, for some reason, everybody thinks it's a great time to do a whole bunch of renovations. I'm really enjoying that immensely. <laughs> I think I'll like the outcome, but in the meantime, the stressor. Um, and yeah, your own health issues, your own. And the other thing we talk about a lot in our team is it addictions. Um, you know, coming out of this time when we were all sort of shut in for such a period of time with so much stress, and we sort of feel like there will probably be lots of challenges that people um, are having around things like addictions as we come out of this. Tanya. All right, thank you, Julie. Um, so before we jump into some strategies, I just wanna say, I know some people we were struggling with presentations. So welcome to people who are just joining us now. We are uh, videotaping and recording this session. So um, it will be posted for you to uh, access uh, after today. Um, so I'm glad we got it worked out and those people have joined us. Uh, so strategies for survival, how is it that, um, you know, we continue to move through um, one day, you know, today, tomorrow, and how do we take care of ourselves? So we're gonna spend some time talking about self-talk, rumination, uh, balancing all of those plates or juggling those balls, and then how do we transform our thoughts? So self-talk, kind of we're our own worst enemy. So you know that little nagging voice that speaks to us, um, the one that doesn't speak out loud? 
but it's those those things that we say to ourselves uh, when we're faced with a situation, um, when we uh, may not be handling a situation the greatest, or we're feeling like we're struggling, uh, or stress levels are getting high. Recognizing how we're talking to ourselves, uh, being aware of that, and being kind to ourselves and talking to ourselves like we would speak to somebody else. Um, and I don't know for others, but I know for myself, I often will catch myself. And the things that I say to myself, I would never say to anybody else. Um, so correct it, challenge it. You know, is this really true? What I'm, you know, what I'm telling myself or what I'm saying? And then how do you support yourself around that? Or what do your other supports look like? What are other people telling you? Um, and how, you know, do you manage when you get to a negative spot? Uh, and how do you bring yourself back? So challenging those thoughts is really, really important. Um, and how do we talk to ourselves in a positive way? So we like we like this in that we need to control what it is we can control and we can't control what's happening out there or uh, how other people are managing. But what we can do is we can control how we respond to things. Um, and that's where we get our power. So when we feel powerless, our ability to respond in a way gives us control in situations. So rumination is our thoughts, kind of our, our processes when we're thinking about things where we get stuck. Um, and like Julie talked about, the dryer going round and round and round. And the more that we um, are stuck in a spot and we go round and round and round, uh, it then kind of controls everything, right? So it impacts um, how we see the world, uh, how we feel about things. Um, and so stopping ourselves um, from ruminating um, on certain things um, is important so that we don't get caught into a negative trap um, and only dealing with our, our, the negative of how we see the world um, and how we're, we're dealing with things that we have no control over. So a key point is listening, um, is not listening to ourselves, sorry, but talk to ourselves. So again, back to that self-talk, um, how is it that we're talking to ourselves and to challenge those, those ways in which we speak to ourselves? Um, an attention diet. So this language doesn't um, necessarily speak to me, but the way I see uh, this is that we want to access information that's credible um, and we want to control the amount of time that we're spending doing certain things. So, for instance, uh, you know, watching the news. So, you know, do I put the TV on and allow CNN to run for three hours at a time? Do I put CP24 on? Um, again, and let it run in the background? Or do I just cut that time back to, say, maybe the six o'clock news? So I get the highlights of the day, right? So basically chunking our time so that we're not uh, feeding ourselves with negativity so that we can shut some of that uh, automatic thinking down as Julie was speaking to. Practice gratitude daily. So what are the things that we could be thankful for? What are the things that um, we um, appreciate? What are the things that um, we can look forward to each day, which will then challenge some of our negative thinking and uh, allow us to be more grateful for the things that are positive in our life. So assertiveness. So basically taking a stand. So if there's something that's making us feel uncomfortable um, and we may not uh, be OK with the way certain people may be in our, say, in our office space, if somebody's not respecting social distancing, then saying this makes me feel uncomfortable. Can we please respect that social distancing is an issue? I had a conversation with a student a couple weeks ago um, who in a classroom was struggling with this exact uh, this exact thing, social distancing, uh, and his peers weren't respecting um, and supporting him to have a conversation with his peers to say that part of the reason that he was so um, concerned about social distancing is 
he, his mom at home had a compromised immune system because she had uh, dealt with cancer last year. And he was really, really concerned and it was bothering him to be at school uh, because he, he didn't want to take anything home to his mom. So allowing the other students to appreciate the level of anxiety that this student was feeling and helping him to be assertive um, really went a long way for that, uh, that classroom community um, so that they could uh, all respect where he was coming from uh, and follow social distancing and understand it from a perspective of impact. And then back to focusing on what we can control. So rooting things in science. So what are the things that public health tells us? What are the things that um, we know uh, have proven over time? Now, yes, it's been a short time, uh, but we know that social distancing, we know that hand hygiene, we know that touching our face, wearing our masks um, are all of the things uh, that help to minimize uh, the chance that we're going to be affected by the virus. We also know that uh, it, it's airborne, right? So uh, helping other staff, other family members, other students to understand the importance of, you know, why is it as a staff person? Do I wear a mask? Do I wear a shield? Um, you know, that because the virus is, again, spread through droplets. So what are the things that we can control? And by keeping ourselves safe and following uh, the things that are based in science, we're doing the most that we possibly can to keep us safe, them safe, and everybody safe. Exercise, um, this is important. So whether that's walking, hiking, just being outside, uh, making time to kind of change your rhythm, right? So for me, I spend a lot of time in the car, I'm at my desk, go home and I sit on the couch. Um, and so getting out and moving um, changes my rhythm, helps to change my thinking. Um, and allows me not to be stuck in my thoughts. And then the last is practice bracketing. So bracketing is a strategy where we allow ourselves, we give ourselves permission to say, this is the time that I'm going to worry about, or this is the time that I'm going to focus on and give ourselves permission, whether it be, you know, for some people, it might only need to be 15 minutes, others, it might need to be a half an hour, but give your, yourself permission um, to worry about those things and to help try and work yourself through it. But then when the time is up, it's time to shelf it. Or another word for that is compartmentalize, right? So basically put it in the drawer, close the drawer um, and come back to it uh, when you've given yourself permission again um, to take it out of the drawer and re-examine it. Uh, and then actually talking to yourself, right? Because there are times where I know that I've said, okay, I need to do this now, but it creeps back in. So actually talking to yourself and saying, this isn't the right time. I need to shelf this, right? So that we don't get caught in that cycle of negativity. Christine? Or is it, sorry, Tina? No, I think it's it's uh, still me. Thanks, Tanya. So this is just a picture of... Um, Oh, it just went out of my head, Kilimanjaro. And one of the reasons why we sh wanted to share this is one of the good things that came out of the changes associated with, with the virus around the world was the reduction in pollution. So this picture was taken to sort of illustrate that uh, the villagers were saying for the first time in in their history anyway, that they could think of, they could see the definition of the, the peak of the mountain. So again, just looking as Tanya is talking about, you're looking for some of the good out of all of these things that have happened on small scales and big scales. So the next little bit, we just wanted to talk about balance. And up here on the screen, we've got these different spheres of ourselves that, that are always in competition for our attention. And, you know, lots of times what we might find is that we're spending too much time in one certain domain, or maybe we're spending too much time with one certain part of our lives. And I know for me, the challenge is not spending too much time at work or thinking about work or, or taking work home. So I think it's important for all of us to just be mindful of how easy it is to get thrown out of balance. And whether that's, you know, we're spending too much time in our head or we're spending too much time worrying about uh, work or things we can't control, or whether that's 
you know, the fact we're not making enough time to have fun and laugh and play. Um, really paying attention to where you're spending your time and how you're spending your time is one of the ways that you can ensure that you're finding some balance in your life. So on that note, our uh, next slide, we're going to hear from Steve Burrows, who's recorded a little message for all of us today. committee, I would like to encourage all of our staff to utilize the resources we have, both personal and professional, to support our wellness during these difficult times. There are three excellent places to find resources that can support us. There are helpful links to resources found in the weekly Wellness Wednesday emails that are sent to all staff. Anonymous access to LifeSpeak on the staff portal, providing further support and resources and the employee assistance program. The EAP provides staff with access to counsellors and services partially funded by the employer. Where a personal trainer can help you at the gym, the EAP can provide us with similar coaching for our overall well-being. Dealing with our current reality presents many challenges, both on a personal level and at work. In my interactions with staff and throughout the board, there are three main points that I think resonate that I'd like to share with you today. Number one. Humans have the ability to time travel. Often feelings of sadness and grief are rooted in feelings that occurred in the past, which can lead to depression if we carry them into the future. Likewise, feeling fearful or unsure of the future can lead to anxiety in the present. Ultimately, we need to practice mindfulness, bringing our awareness to the present in order to forget negative experiences from the past and erase anxieties of a possible future. Right here, right now, we are okay. That calm can be powerful. Number two, we grow what we plant. If we plant fear and anxiety, that's what will grow within us. When we nurture those feelings by talking about gossip or accessing too much social media in, in place of facts or attaching ourselves to other people's issues, we develop a stronger connection to those unhealthy feelings. Watering the bad seed will grow the bad plant and take nourishment from our body. So what should we plant instead? Gratitude for what we have, hope for what will come, and confidence that things will work out. And number three, change only what you can change. For the things you cannot change, you must change your perspective. In any workplace, we can modify our attitude and improve our environment uh, by taking lessons from a flock of geese. So what do geese do? Firstly, they fly together. A flock will fly thousands of miles in perfect V formation. As each bird moves its wings, it creates an uplift for the bird that is following. 
it's estimated that their formation flying is 70% more effective than flying alone. Next, look down on your issues from above. Gain a clear perspective when you see the whole picture, not just what's in front of you. Next, share leadership. From a distance, a flock looks like it's led by a single bird, but in reality, the lead bird rotates through the flock when it tires to take advantage of uplift from the birds in front. Next, communicate encouragement. The birds at the rear of the flock encourage the birds in front by honking in order to keep the flock moving at a good speed. And lastly, lean on each other. When a member of the flock becomes sick or injured, two geese drop out of formation and follow it down to help and protect it. They stay until it is able to fly again, then they soar off together to catch up with the flock. Any staff who can rely on each other, working toward common goals, encouraging each other and sharing the responsibilities, that's a flock that will fly far. I hope you can take something away from what I've shared today. Thank you, Christine, for hosting this webinar and for everyone else who was able to join us. Remember that you have access to a wide range of resources that can help you and your family, colleagues and friends feel supported and informed as we navigate our world today. Thank you. Be well. And I'll just take a moment while Tanya brings the PowerPoint back up. Well done, Tanya. Thank you. So Steve said a lot in there that I found really helpful. And uh, one of the things that we know helps during times of intense stress is, is to really try to be grounded in the here and now. And he spoke a bit about that. And one of the things that we can do to help us stay focused on the here and now is what we call grounding techniques. And some of you have heard about this. Some of you probably use these. And if you don't call them grounding techniques, you may just be using them intuitively. And some of the things that can help with grounding, definitely the deep breathing or the square breathing that some of you have probably taught students. Um, also doing some progressive muscle relaxation. So noticing where do you hold the tension? Is it in your upper neck or your back? Or is it in your face or your jaw? And also repeating mantras that are helpful and positive. And Tanya spoke about this, saying things to yourself like, I am calm, I can do this, I can handle this. We know from brain research that the messages that we give ourselves have a huge influence on our mood and on our behavior. So trying to really be conscious of those messages that we give our, our mind is a way that we can stay grounded in the moment. And finally, transforming our thoughts. And these are things that uh, you know we can strive to do. It, it is a challenge to change our thoughts when we're being bombarded with a lot of negativity and messages that uh, might be discouraging. But even within that, we can look for the opportunity to reframe what's happening. We can look at how we can be more creative. And I know a lot of you as Grand Erie staff have really gone above and beyond to find ways to be creative, to connect with students, to bring curriculum to the classroom uh, or in your jobs as support staff to try to find new ways of doing business. Even when I think about our interviews that we've done, for example, for new employees, doing things virtually. So we've we've all had to be creative in this time. And the other thing that we can do is, is be curious and instead of being in judgment, maybe just be curious about why things are happening a certain way or why people are thinking uh, or feeling a certain way and trying to understand what is maybe the motivation behind behavior, not just our own behavior, but other people and recognizing that people are doing the best that they can. So I'm going to turn it over to Tina now, who's going to talk a little bit about the importance of acceptance and permission. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say when you said about the uh, recognizing that people are doing the best that they can, 
I remember doing the once a week grocery shopping outing during the lockdown and I was in line at the grocery store and it was quite a long line. And one of the people that was there needed help. So I had an appointment to get to and I thought, well, I'll put my stuff on the uh, belt and let it go. And then she left and she went to help another person. And I could hear her coworkers yelling at her saying, you need to get over here now. The lineup's too long. It's growing. And the girl kept helping the other individual. So when she came back, I said to her, you know, that was very kind of you. You are being very thoughtful and helping out a coworker who was struggling. And she looked at me as if, why did she say that? She thought I was going to yell at her because I was the person that couldn't leave to go to a different line because my stuff was already on there, ready to go through and be uh, put through. But uh, just a very simple thing that I noticed and uh, she probably didn't expect that reaction. So I think that sometimes when, as Christine was talking about, the things that we can do to help ourselves and simple messages when she was describing when we give ourselves uh, the self-talk that Tanya also mentioned, there's research that discusses that even if you don't feel like smiling, you are able to change the way your brain is processing your mood by faking a smile. And it sounds like it doesn't make sense, but if you do that, you know that you're acting, but your body doesn't. So just by smiling, it will allow the positive brain hormones and chemicals to flow through your body. And it does make you feel better, even though that's not exactly how you feel. So it's a little bit of a, a simple trick to do. And I know right now, a lot of people can't see our smiles because of our masks. And other people have called that, uh, we can use our smiles. So smile with our eyes, but underneath you can be smiling and that will help you feel a little bit brighter as well. And it'll affect your mood. Uh, the acceptance and permission part, it is not a competition. Like we are within this plant pandemic. No one knew that we would be here. It makes me think of, um, it's, a, it's actually a poem that was written by a woman and it was related to planning to have a child and the child was not exactly perfect as they anticipated. Uh, her name was Emily Pearl Kingsley and it's called Welcome to Holland. And throughout this whole pandemic, I've kind of been thinking about that message because they had wanted to be in, on a trip to Italy and that's not where they arrived. Their destination ended up being Holland because their child did not be uh, the individual that they expected. And I'm not saying anything negative about, about Italy or Holland, but none of us packed our bags to go for a trip to the land of COVID. That's for sure. But but here we are. So we have to make the best of it. And that uh, message that I remembered from that little poem has been helpful for me throughout all of this time to say we are here at this moment, but this is not forever. And as it's showing on the slide, purpose is, is not to come out the other side, a newer, shiny version of, of ourselves. We don't know the future. And as was alluded in the message from Steve, this is something that's new to all of us. So we are best to look at things the way we are in the moment and flow with the experience. Give yourself permission to have good and bad days. None of us are perfect, we're all human beings. And the most important thing is for us to be able to realize that there are things that we can and can't control. I say to myself every day that I can't control the fact that we're in a pandemic, but I can definitely have some impact and control about how I'm reacting to it and what I'm doing for myself and others around me to make their days somewhat better. One of the things I wanted to share was related to uh, in the summer, my friends and I were joking about the COVID-15, we called it, and we were discussing the weight gain that all of us had experienced throughout the lockdown, being at home and having snacks so readily available. And I had said to them, well, I haven't stepped on the scale since this all began, but I was curious, so I did. And sure enough, it was definitely a COVID-15 gain. And uh, of course, as Christine mentioned about the stress hormone cortisol, it's all around the midsection. So I decided rather than trying to eat and snack while I might treat myself to a television program, I bought some Lego, simple basic Lego, because I tried to color once before while I was watching TV because that's relaxing, keeps your hands busy but it didn't do anything because I couldn't watch the program and enjoy it. And playing with Lego keeps my hands busy, therefore I'm not snacking. And that's a helpful technique because I also have certain programs and people are 
often wanting to travel. I don't do a lot of traveling at the moment, but I do PVR a lot of HGTV programs, uh, Cal uh, Caribbean Life, Mexico Life, uh, House Hunters International, Off the Grid, On the Beach, those types of Canadian programs. And that allows me to vicariously travel to different destinations that I may not have been interested in or have ever visited. And it gives me an opportunity to make a list for the future. And people might say, well, why are you watching that? And that might be depressing. But no, I'm, I'm planning for trips for the future. So that's something that, that I do to help myself with some ideas to make it better. I also, for my role, I do a lot of driving and quite a lot of long drives. So I definitely make a point of looking around me and admiring the wonders of nature and uh, animals that I might find and still paying attention to safety and following the rules of the road and whatnot. But I um, made a point of being more mindful throughout all of this to recognize and be grateful. We talked about practicing gratitudes of those things that are there and they're free. We don't have to go out of our way. We don't have to buy anything. We can just look around and uh, enjoy that. Uh, yoga, yoga is very important. I do practice that each morning and treat myself to a class once a week. So I'm trying to share some practical strategies for us to be implementing for anybody who's interested in those things. Um, definitely was doing that this morning outside with a Ziploc bag on my head. And it would look silly, but it was uh, pouring rain. Meditation, that was shared with me by another colleague who indicated that sitting quietly within yourself is an invaluable tool that can melt away all sorts of worry, anxiety, uncertainty, etc. I know a lot of us have talked about spending more time outdoors and exercising and trying to help our bodies move. That's definitely uh, very healthy and a good strategy. Laughter yoga, we mustn't forget about laughter and make sure that we do have some laughter in our lives at least once a day. And you can look up uh, a laughter yoga and practice that online and even become a certified laughter yoga instructor if one is interested. Uh, trying to learn a new hobby or reignite an old one. Something that I was participating in, planned to participate in March, got cancelled and was available for this fall. So I, I knew it wasn't going to be gone forever. I just thought at some point we're going to be able to go. And it was a horseback riding experience with some crafts involved and uh, something I haven't done for probably 20 years. Uh, Tanya mentioned about not watching the news. Yes, yeah, some of us, I choose to do no social media and might tune, in, tune into CH News a little bit in the morning and otherwise just choose certain uh, news articles in my uh, news feed on my phone. The other thing is uh, traveling, thinking about places that you could go. One other thing I wanted to share, I wrote this down. Uh, recently I, I was teaching temporarily for the virtual learning academy with a grade five class. And I thought about some real current situations that we could discuss that would help us deal with social studies, being responsible citizens and talking about the government and what all levels of government were doing to help us in uh, our country of Canada throughout the whole pandemic. And the students were very insightful. It was quite amazing. And they were also sharing some of the positives that we've learned based on using all of the technology, learning ways to connect with each other in different manners looking out for each other, spending time with your family while you have the time. Because at some point they were saying, it'll be busy again and we'll be doing all of those other things that we won't have so much time to uh, spend with each other. For uh, students of that age, I thought that was uh, pretty, pretty mature of them to think of. We talked about a story written by a young girl um, named Cora. She wrote a book with her mother about Cora and the Corona during the lockdown and she was upset that she couldn't spend time with her best friend. She decided to use some recycled materials and make some homemade musical instruments that she started to play in her backyard and noticed that the rest of the community and all of the neighbors started to also do the same. And they started to sing along as she was making up different rhymes. The key to being, staying away is the key to being Corona free. So I had the grade five class actually do both things. They made up their own rhyme related to the responsible things to do following public health rules during the pandemic to keep themselves and others safe. And they made their own uh, musical instruments. And then we did a virtual concert on a Teams meeting for one of our classes. 
which I was inspired by uh, Burt Bacharach's song was sent to me by one of my principals last year. The song, the uh, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And it was a compilation of people doing this song and doing their parts. So the students were able to do that together and it was very awesome. One of the other things that the children were saying in the chat on the side, and Steve alluded to this, that humans can time travel. They did express that they wanted a time machine. They didn't like 2020. They wanted a time machine so they could escape from 2020. So we talked about that and having to realize that, you know, we are here, we're going to do the best we can in the year that we're in. It is definitely a difficult time and explain to them that they are living history. Uh, one of the things that I had somebody share with me this summer was a little comment about the Back to the Future that was uh, Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox, the main characters, saying to each other, whatever you do, don't ever set that DeLorean to 2020 and travel to that country or to that time in our, our country or the world because you don't want to go there. But we can't avoid where we are. We are here. And our, we certainly say our vision for 2020 is always going to be 2020. We'll have definitely clear vision about what we did during this time as we we're working together to make the best of it. One other thing, a uh, quote from the story in the, the book and the movie Wonder, if you're given an opportunity to choose between being right and being kind, always choose kind. So those are just some of the things I wanted to share. And, and we are all living with COVID as the slide is talking about, and it is real. I have to admit, I usually have a much easier ability to do the regular gratitudes, but it takes more energy but I'm making sure that I do that every day and regularly throughout the day because it is something that's very healthy and helps us keep our positive outlook. So can you continue to connect with others? Reach out and FaceTime with people. My friends were, were teaching me other, um, it's called Duo, D-U-O, other ways to reach out and we're using Teams and people use Zoom and you know people talk about, we're having a, we're having a Zoom party and uh, sharing and celebrating together. We were doing some uh, retirement celebrations last year and visiting students by driving around and uh, waving at people in their front lawns and uh, just visiting from a distance, which was absolutely inspiring and a really good way to connect. But we do have to transform ourselves daily and creatively and we wake up every morning and say, let's make this the best day we can and try to, to do the balance that was talked about keeping ourselves centered and realize that this is not forever. And we need to be a shelter in the storm for those who need us and also a champion for those whose voice is lost. We can do the best we can to make our day better and reach out and share that with everyone else. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying this. I'm going to pass this along to Christine again to finish up. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Tina. That was fantastic. Some great ideas. Laughing yoga. Yo that was, I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that up. So um, just on a final note, we just wanted to highlight some of the resources that we wanted to share. Um, certainly Steve talked about our um, employee assistance program. Life Speak should be on there. It is, I see there, online mental health material. There are also resources on the staff portal under Safe and Inclusive Schools. We will post this in addition to the PowerPoint. And there are other documents on there if you want to take a look at the portal. Also, School Mental Health Ontario has some fantastic resources for educators, for those of us that are working in the education system. So it's specific to schools and, and supporting students. So that's another place that you can look for resources. And I think on that note, we are at the end of our webinar. We just wanted to open it up to all of you. If you had any questions, comments, suggestions, we'll open it up to the floor. And um, other than that, we wanted to thank you for joining us. I know we had some technical issues. It looks like an, an old link was sent out to some folks, so I'm not sure how that happened. But um, anyway, we got through it and uh, it's a little bit of an example of how living in COVID has, has been a challenge for all of us, including learning this new technology. So over to the group. Are there any questions anyone wants to ask or any comments?
And thank you to the team today, Julie, Tanya, Tina, Laura. Not seeing any questions. Oh, just a thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. That's kind. Lisa joined us for quite a few of our webinars back in the spring. We did a series of them. OK, well, if there aren't any questions, once again, thank you, everybody. Take care of yourselves out there. Uh, this is going to be a year to remember. We're making history, folks, like I keep telling our team. And, um, you know, there's going to be better days ahead. So hang in there. Uh, reach out to any of us if you think that there's some supports that we can offer or information you're looking for. And we hope to see you again at uh, one of our next webinar series. So take care, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Take care. Enjoy your evening.